Hello, mathematicians. Today, we're going to continue our video series on representing numerical data on number lines by looking at the same question from the previous video. Um, but in this case, we're going to be making a histogram. And a histogram is a collection of the data so that the data is continuous. But the difference with a histogram is that uh, in, instead of labeling bars, uh, with just one category, uh, the bars are going to be labeled in intervals of numbers. So for example, uh, 5 through 8, 9 through 12. Um, those are the uh, intervals that I'm, I'm talking about. So when look, making a histogram, a histogram looks a lot like a bar graph, but it's very different in two very distinct ways. One, the bars do touch in a histogram because you're talking about continuous data and the bars are labeled or the data is grouped in intervals. So instead of just one number, uh, that bar representing one number, it'll represent a range of numbers, otherwise known as an interval. And just so you have the vocabulary down, this is what I'm talking about when I say interval. That's how you spell it. Okay. All right, so uh, let's read the question, just in case you weren't able to watch the previous video. And for more information on graphing data uh, on number lines, you can watch uh, the video series um, that come before and after this video. All right, Ms. McGregor is a teacher in rural Florida. She surveyed her students to find out how far from school her students lived. The following data is the distance between the school and her students' homes in miles. So when I see eight, this is representing um, one student who lives eight miles um, from the school. This 10 represents another student who lives 10 miles from the school. This seven represents one student who lives seven miles from the school, and so on and so forth. So our, our task at hand is to represent the data in a histogram. And be sure to label your axes and include a title. So a histogram is going to have two axes. First, it's going to have a horizontal axis, axis, and then it's also going to have a vertical axis. This vertical axis is going to keep track of how many times um, numbers within that group or interval um, come up. And, of course, this bottom is going to be labeled with the actual groupings of the numbers. So first of all, let's take a look at the data itself. Um, we have, what's our smallest number? Our smallest number is 5, and that's the number of miles. And our largest number is the number 11. So I have to think, how can I group this data? It has to be in groups um, of intervals. So. Let me see, I could do 5 to 6, that's 1, six, uh, 7 to 8, that's another, 9 to 10, that's another, and 11 to 12, that's another. So 5 to 6, 7 to 8, 9 to 10, and 11 to 12 make four different intervals. So I'm going to draw lines here to separate my intervals. So this will be from here to here, one interval from here to here, another interval, from here to here, another interval, and from here to here, another interval. Okay, so I'm going to label those intervals. 5 to 6, 7 to 8, 9 to 10, and 11 to 12. And when I say this, I'm, I'm, I'm actually giving you a range of numbers, the interval. And again, these represent the um, distance in miles. And this over here is going to represent the number of students. Because we are talking about students, and these numbers do represent the distances of uh, students homes between uh, homes and school. So this represents the number of students. 
And on these, on the vertical axis, I'm actually going to label the line itself. So I label the line. Whereas on the horizontal axis, I don't necessarily label the line, I label between the line. So I'm going to label one student, two students, three students, four students, and if there are more, I can keep on going. Five students. All right, and again, here is where zero is on, on both of them. All right, so here we go. We're going to begin to make counts of how many five through sixes we see on the actual, in the actual data set. So once we see fives or any number between five and six, we're going to count it. All right, that's not between five and six, not between five and six. Keep on going. Uh, I see one right here. One, one five. So I'm going to make a line here. There's one student who has five miles between school and home. I'm going to draw my line right down. So you can see how, how this is keeping track of how many times that a five through six pops up in the data set. Uh, you can think of this as almost like a tally chart, but it is keeping track of um, how many numbers appear in that, in that grouping or that interval with bars. All right, next, seven through eight. So I'm looking for either a seven or an eight or any number in between. All right, so I have one, two, three, four. Four anymore? No. I have four numbers. So four students live between seven and eight miles from school. And again, these bars touch. All right, they're not separate. Okay, next, uh, 9 through 10. Okay, one number, two, three. Three students who live between 9 and 10 miles from school. And the last one, 11 through 12. Taken, taken, taken. Last one right there, one. So there's one student who lives 11 to 12 miles away from school. All right, and there you have it. That is your uh, that is your histogram. We've labeled the axes with uh, our intervals and what units we were talking about, and we also labeled our our vertical axis with uh, with actual number and counts of the number of students. So we've labeled both the axes with both numbers, intervals, and uh, units with labels, and now we have to include a title. So the title, a good title for this would be distance between school and students' homes in miles. And let's, let's write the title up here. Distance between student homes and school. And there you have it. That is a histogram, um, and that is a very organized way to, uh, to show your data. Uh, lastly, I, I do want to say just verify that you've, you've counted properly um, by verifying that if you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces of data, that you also have nine uh, students that are being kept, kept track of so you, don't, so you didn't forget anything. So we have one student here. We have four students here. We have three students here, following along there, and following along here, one student there. All right, one plus three is four, plus four is eight, plus one is nine. So yes, it does equal out. So I, I did properly take care of all the data in the data set. Hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, please go to the next video for how to make a box plot, otherwise known as a box and whisker plot. Uh, take care and see you in the next video.